The time of the rapture is very close. It's extremely glaring and every one of us can confirm that. Yet everyone, so far, has been wrong in their prediction. People have been predicting the time when the rapture will happen since time immemorial. None of them were right. None of their predictions came true. It's almost time that we stop predicting a specific date and time when the rapture will happen. Why should we stop predicting the rapture? The Bible states in Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The scripture says that no one knows. If this scriptural statement is true, then it would be apt to tell people to stop guessing. All forms of confusion concerning the date and time of the rapture will be the best. There are a lot of end time prophecies drifting around regarding the rapture. A lot of them are just hoaxes. One thing for sure is that Christ will come like a thief in the night. This is a subject that has been analyzed and talked about by numerous researchers who have refined their teachings concerning this event. Many individuals have made a special effort to be off base about the rapture and their prediction. They often have complicated schemes and reasons why they believe they're right, even though everyone has been wrong in the past. If a believer could learn of the time when Christ will shout from the clouds, then the rapture would cease to be imminent. The second coming of the Lord will be debatable once the rapture has occurred and the events of the tribulation commence. It will be debatable since signs and dates will be a part of the events that will precede Christ's return. If one becomes a believer in the tribulation, they'll be able to figure where they are on the calendar of the prophesied events and have a pretty good idea when Christ will return. This is why Luke 21 28 tells believers at the end of the tribulation, now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. The scriptural phrase coming as a thief in the night means or suggests that Jesus is coming to take by surprise. The scriptural text isn't a reprimand to watch world occasions so we won't know when he will return rather his guidance is to watch ourselves. He's looking at being watchful about our otherworldly state as well as being sagacious and profoundly alert as we carry on with life. In Thessalonians 3.5, according to Paul, and the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. It was Paul's desire for them to patiently wait. He realizes that the Lord would return for the church when nobody knows so the requirement for patient waiting was of need. Christ's return isn't something that the flesh and blood can predict. It's not something that mortal man can predict. His second coming can only be revealed. Everyone should not fail to remember that the day of the rapture will fall on us without anyone noticing. Nobody knows the day or the hour. The signs may show you that the time is close, but nobody has the idea about the day or the hour. The Bible calls us to live with this pressure watching the time and not knowing the day and hour because he will come to us like a thief in the night. The Father has fixed a specific day on his calendar when this long event will occur nonetheless. He will not at any point tell us when or how since we are told to wait patiently for Christ's return, just like a sitting bride of the hour is tuning in for the call of the groom. When the disciples asked Jesus in Acts 1, 6, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Christ's response set the energy for successive issues about the whole church age. He said that it's not in their power to note the time or the season which the Father has put in his power. The times and seasons are said having been destined by God, yet for the church we are not to know them. They are a piece of God's mystery. For God's people, the church, things associated with heaven can't be found or figured out by prediction. They must be revealed. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, the mysterious things have a place unto the Master our God, yet those things which are uncovered have a place unto us and to our youngsters perpetually, that we might do every one of the expressions of this regulation. If you don't watch out the entryway, we'll be closed while you're out. You'll be unwinding, having a good time, and imagining that you have additional opportunities to get your things right, subsequently failing to do the right things and afterward the day will jump on you without anyone noticing. Nobody, absolutely nobody, has a clue about the day or the hour of the Lord's coming. However, everyone has been charged to watch out for it.
It isn't to plant seeds of dread, but to keep us conscious and ready as we sit tight for the arrival of our Lord. You would rather not be profoundly sleeping when the Lord knocks at your door. In Mark 13, 35 through 36, it's been said, Therefore, keep watch because you don't know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. The rapture is for the genuine holy people of God who have repented from their transgressions and live prepared for his return. It is for the people who advance God's interest in righteousness. For anybody to qualify for the rapture, he or she should be born again since that's what gives access to the kingdom of God. A person should be extremely certain of his salvation with practically no bit of uncertainty. There will be no space for atonement or compensation during the rapture. The perfect opportunity is now. Additionally, the rapture isn't really for religious individuals. It isn't really for mere churchgoers or indiscreet believers. The rapture is for a chosen, not many, who are consistently prepared. It is for the individuals who are in a profound sense ready and alive. It isn't for Christians who rest and sleep in a profound sense. The smallest sin in one's life can preclude a person from this extraordinary day. The message of the rapture is like a soothing message. It is intended to comfort holy people and keep the glory ahead. It's for a church that is alive and fervently waiting for the Lord's return. The message further reinforces the confidence and desire of believers that even at death they can make certain of being raptured on the last day. It signifies believers that their waiting isn't to no end. Nobody likes to wait, yet when it comes to our daily lives, we're ready to wait for anything and everything. Waiting isn't simply something we need to do while we get what we need. Waiting is the most common way of becoming what God maintains that we should be. Biblical waiting is certainly not an inactive sitting around idly, or is something to happen that will permit us to get away from our difficulties. Waiting doesn't mean doing anything. It isn't fatalistic abdication. It's anything but a method for sidestepping terrible reality. The people who stand by are the people who work since they realize their work isn't to no end. A farmer can stand by the entire summer for his harvest since he has gone about his responsibilities of planting the seed, watering and weeding the plants. The people who look out for God can approach their relegated undertakings. It's certain that God will give importance and ends to their lives in the harvest of their work. Waiting is the certain, restrained, eager, dynamic, and in some cases difficult gripping to God. It makes us realize that we'll receive a benefit. In 1 Corinthians 1, 6-8, it's been said, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we hold on to the Lord's return, let us not neglect to guarantee that we get ready ourselves as bright feet for the bridegroom. Living ready for his return will be an excursion we should all accomplish. As we endeavor to shield ourselves from misdirecting predictions, let us additionally not fail to remember that to be sure, the Lord will come for His church and the time for it is really close. Date setting usually has a negative impact upon many people's interest in their perception of the study of Bible prophecy. Critics of rapture and prophecy will sure use these abuses to justify to many their opposition to our beliefs. Sadly, others who might have otherwise been interested in learning more about the subject may be frightened away by these extreme applications. These people don't realize that by introducing into our futuristic approach to prophecy to ideas and conclusions that flow from the logic of the long discredited historic hermeneutic that they are changing and misrepresenting the very character of rapture theology. We may believe that we are near the general time of Christ's return since Israel is back in her land and other players are being placed on the end time stage. However, Christ's rapture of his church is a signless event that could happen at any moment. When it does, God will complete his plan for his people. We've seen various happenings of events previously mentioned in the scriptures as indications of the rapture. These include earthquakes, natural disasters, nations rising against nations, and many more. These events only affirm the fact that the coming of the rapture is true, but that they don't in any way give us a clue that the rapture will take place. Therefore, our calling as believers is to wait patiently and have steady trust in our bridegroom. 
Our calling as church age believers is faithfully waiting for our beloved bridegroom to catch us up in the clouds and take us into his father's house. What a glad reunion with our Savior we shall have.